Uh, hello, this video is on chapter 9, section 9.10 and 9.11. So this is about buffers. So what is a buffer? A buffer is a solution whose pH changes very little when an acid or a base is added. Um, so what it means is that a buffer solution will maintain the pH at a given value uh, that depends on the buffer itself. Um, let's look at an example to understand what is a solution without a buffer. If we take, for example, uh, distilled water or pure water, which has a pH of 7.0, um, if you um, um, monitor the pH and uh, decide to add a few drops of a strong acid, so H3O plus here symbolizes the acid, that you're adding, if you're adding uh, an acid to uh, pure water, you will see the pH drop from 7.0 to 4.0, for example. On a scale of 0 to 14, uh, this is a large uh, drop in the pH value. If, on the contrary, uh, you're adding um, a base, a strong base to the water, and OH minus here is symbolizing a strong base. It's the hydroxide ion. Uh, let's say you're adding a few drops of a strong base in the water and you will see the pH go from 7.0 to 10.5, for example. And again, that's a big jump in a pH value, knowing that pH goes from 0 to 14. Uh, this is a big jump and, and your solution has become uh, very basic. Uh, in the case where you added base and very acidic when you added an acid. So that's a solution that doesn't have a buffer. If now uh, we are looking at a solution that contains a buffer, um, let's say that buffer um, maintains the pH at 7.0, uh, but again I want to emphasize that buffers are um, uh, maintaining maintaining pH at a value that depends on the buffer itself. So they, they can have all kinds of uh, pH value. So let's say this buffer here maintains uh, the pH around seven. Let's um, add again a few drops of a strong acid to that uh, buffer solution. And if you do that, you will see that the pH uh, will drop from 7.0 to 6.9, for example, just uh, 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 one value, one uh, down one in the decimal um, value, so it's a very small drop compared to the previous example. So we can say that the buffer is able to maintain the pH here. And if instead we are adding a strong base to the buffer, and here it's symbolized by the OH minus um, addition. Uh, if you do that to a buffer that maintains pH and you see a drop to seven, uh, an increase to 7.1, for example, which is a very small increase, and you can tell that the buffer is working and maintaining the pH at 7.0. So that's a, a good buffer. So that's what a buffer is used for. It is used to maintain the pH at a given value, keep it in that narrow range. So what are uh, buffers made of? Um, buffers are composed of roughly equal amounts of a weak acid and the salt of its conjugate base. Everything is important here. Equal amounts of a weak acid and the salt of its conjugate base. So it has to be a weak acid because a strong acid would completely dissociate into its conjugate base and you would not have the strong acid anymore in, in equilibrium with the base. You need a weak acid because weak acids um, dissociate partially and so they will stay in solution and you need, um, because weak acid tend to not dissociate too much, uh, you need to add the salt of the conjugate base um, to compensate for the the fact that it doesn't dissociate too much. And so you want a, a, a large concentration of the weak acid and a large concentration of its conjugate base. 
And so, as I said, every word is meaningful here. It's not any conjugate base, it's the conjugate base of that weak acid. So it's conjugate base. Uh, for example, um, let's say you're doing a buffer with the acetic acid, um, HC2H3O2 uh, is uh, acetic acid, and that's a weak acid. So you would have um, a high concentration of the acetic acid, and you would add the sort of its conjugate base, and its conjugate base is the acetate ion. And the sort of its conjugate base would mean, uh, for example, uh, sodium acetate or lithium acetate or uh, potassium acetate. Uh, it comes usually with um, metallic uh, ion, right? That's why it's the sort of the conjugate base. And so these two, uh, acetic acid and acetate ion, would be in large uh, quantity and about equal quantity in solution to make a buffer. So why does the buffer resist changes in pH? Um, it's because if you add a base to the buffer, and a base, uh, for example, contains um, the hydroxide ion, the OH minus ion, and so that base that you add to, to the buffer will react with the weak acid, right? Because it's a base, it will react with the weak acid. And by doing so, it kinds of um, changes the strong base into a, uh, the conjugate base of the weak acid, which is a weak, uh, weak base. So it neutralizes the strong base and, and pH will be maintained. The same way that if you add an acid to your uh, buffer solution, the acid here uh, will contain uh, hydronium ion, H3O plus ions, and the H3O plus ions will react with the conjugate base of the buffer. And by reacting with the conjugate base, you will uh, obtain the weak acid. And so it's, it's like changing the strong acid into a weak acid, and that helps to maintain the pH. Um, all of this is true, but there, there is a condition is that uh, the, so the pH of the solution will be maintained as long as the added amount of acid or base are small compared to the concentration of the buffer component. Right? If you are adding uh, you know, uh, a large amount of acid, strong acid to the buffer solution, the buffer will not be able to um, maintain pH because um, too much of it uh, uh, will overwhelm uh, the buffer and, and, and then it, it will, um, uh, what we call, uh, this will uh, exceed the buffer capacity. When you're exceeding the buffer capacity, the buffer is not able to maintain the pH anymore. And if you add too much acid, you will see a drop in the pH. And if you add too much base, you will see a, a large increase in the pH. So remember, it's um, capable of maintaining the pH as long as you don't add large amounts of acid or base. Um, so this is going into more details with an example of, uh, of what we just said. Uh, let's look at this um, equilibrium reaction. On the left, we have the acetate, um, uh, sorry, acetic acid. This CH3COOH is the same as uh, HC2H3O2. This is the same, except that um, in this way of writing it, um, it shows, it gives you an idea of the Lewis structure, right? It's one carbon bonded to three hydrogens and to the other carbon, and that second carbon is bonded to the two oxygens, and then the hydrogen is bonded to one oxygen. So, acetic acid here, uh, when placed in water, is in equilibrium with the acetate ion, CH3COO negative one. 
and uh, the hydronium ion H3O+. Remember that acids donate a proton to the base, and so here the acetic acid will donate its H plus to water, which will act as a base. Water will accept the proton and become H3O plus. And the acetic acid will uh, lose its H plus and become the acetate ion, CH3CO2, negative one. So um, now if we are adding an acid, to the following buffer equilibrium, then the excess acid will react with the conjugate base of the buffer and the pH will be maintained. maintained. Um, so um, I, I, I guess this um, kind of um, um, slide here reminds you of the uh, Le Chatelier principle. Uh, Le Chatelier's principle is saying that when you are um, doing um, a change into an equilibrium, the equilibrium will try to counteract that change and uh, uh, do the opposite uh, of that change. So here, when you are adding an acid to this buffer equilibrium, it's like adding more product because H3O plus here is on the product side of the equation. And uh, when you're adding more product to an equilibrium, it will, uh, the, the equilibrium will try to consume that product. And so the equilibrium will shift to the left to consume the product. And that's why uh, you see that adding more um, acid here will uh, drive the equilibrium to the left and you will uh, have the acid react with the conjugate base and they will uh, form more acetic acid and water. But because the amount of added acid is small relative to the concentration of acetic acid and the acetate ion, uh, the change uh, of the concentration of the acetic acid and acetate ion will not be changed much. Um, so uh, this means that the pH will be maintained because uh, the conjugate base by reacting with the acid will uh, remove those excess um, H3O plus ions and so pH will be maintained. Uh, this, of course, uh, the condition that the uh, acid you add is not too much compared to the uh, amount of buffer in the solution. And it's the same process uh, when you're adding a base, uh, except that uh, the notice how the equilibrium reaction has been modified. Um, and so we still have the acetic acid on the left, but instead of adding water, we're adding the hydroxide ion concentrate, the hydroxide ion, sorry. And uh, so the acid will donate its proton to the OH minus ion. OH minus plus H plus together, they make water. So you have water on the right. And then the acid, when it loses its H+, plus, it's becoming the CH3CO2 uh, negative one, which is the acetate ion. So it's the same equilibrium. Uh, it's just that uh, instead of having the H2O and H3O plus pair, we have the H2O OH minus pair. Um, so, uh, let's say that we are adding a base to this following buffer equilibrium. Then the excess base will react with the conjugate acid and the overall pH does not change much. So again, let's look at this more uh, in detail. Adding more uh, base, you know, adding a base to this means that you're adding more reactant because a base can be represented by the hydroxide ion, OH minus. So adding more base means you are ad adding more reactant. And Le Chatelier's principle says that when you're adding more reactant, the uh, equilibrium will try to consume that reactant. Uh, 
And for this, it needs the the equilibrium needs to go forward and 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 drive the reaction to the right to consume that excess uh, reactant, right? So adding more base will mean that you will move the equilibrium to the right, and the uh, base will react with the acetic acid and form more acetate ions and water. Again, the concentrations of acetic acid and acetate ion are large compared to the amount of base that you add. So the acetic acid is consuming the hydroxide ion added and the, the concentration of the, acid, the acetic acid and the acetate ion are large enough that they are not really uh, changed, which is why the pH is maintained. Again, this works well if the amount of base added is uh, relatively small compared to the uh, amount of buffer in the solution. So this is a list of common uh, buffers that are found uh, in, uh, in biological systems, for example. Um, we just talked about the acetic acid and acetate uh, buffer. So the, again, a buffer is made of a weak acid, so it, it's always a weak acid and its conjugate base, not, not any base, but its conjugate base. So of course the formula of the weak acid will have the H plus and the formula of the conjugate base has the H plus removed, right? And the Ka, we, which is the um, equilibrium constant or acid dissociation constant uh, in this case, is given here. Um, there is the bicarbonate carbonate um, ion um, buffer, HCO3 negative one and CO3 negative two. Um, the dihydrogen phosphate and hydrogen phosphate. Again, uh, the weak acid has one H plus more in its formula than the conjugate base. Hydrogen phosphate and, pho and the phosphate ion are also making an acid base pair. That is a good buffer. Um, so notice how HPO4 negative 2 is in both buffers, the, the hydrogen phosphate, hydrogen phosphate, and the hydrogen phosphate slash phosphate buffer. Now, if we look at the Ka values, um, they are all with a negative exponent. And remember that negative exponent means uh, that you're dividing, you know, five times by 10, 11 times by 10, eight times or 13 times by 10. So these Ka values are very, very small. It's very, very small numbers. And um, when we have a very small Ka value, it means we have weak acids, right? Um, because uh, remember that uh, a large Ka value indicates a strong acid. So now if you have a small Ka value, it indicates a weak acid. And so these Ka values being small confirm that we have weak acids there in, in those buffers. So now um, let's focus on um, biology and human, um, the human body. And so um, in, uh, in the body, uh, we have a lot of fluids and um, blood um, has to be maintained at a pH uh, between 7.35 and 7.45. It is a very narrow range that is important to be uh, kept because the um, uh, the blood transports a lot of uh, molecules like proteins and um, if the buffer was not maintained uh, these proteins uh, could be denatured if the buffer was you know too acidic or too basic and so to keep the uh, proper functions of the molecules that travel into the blood the pH has to be maintained at that value 
Um, otherwise, you know, when you denate your proteins, then, you know, uh, it leads to a disease and, and um, potentially death even. So normal uh, blood pH is uh, between 7.435 and 7.45. And so the buffer needs a, the, sorry, the blood needs a buffer to maintain the pH in that range. And the main uh, buffer in the blood is the carbonic acid bicarbonate uh, ion um, pair, H2CO3 and HCO3 negative one, right? Uh, the carbonic acid, when it loses an H plus, becomes HCO3. You can verify that by adding H plus to HCO3. If you add H plus, you end up with two H's and the positive and negative charge cancel, and that's why carbonic acid is neutral. So um, let's look at the um, chemical equation and the uh, uh, right side of it, uh, because you can see there are two sets of arrows. So let's look at the right arrows. Um, on the left side of these arrows you have the carbonic acid H2CO3. It's in equilibrium uh, with H3O plus and HCO3 negative one. Because if you place carbonic acid in water it will act as an acid uh, uh, you know the carbonic acid is acid so it will donate a proton to the water water will become the H3O plus ion and the carbonic acid will become the bicarbonate ion. So that's uh, the equilibrium here for the buffer. Um, on the other hand, on the left side, um, uh, the carbonic acid is not um, stable in a solution. It's very unstable and tends to dissociate um, into carbonic, uh, sorry, um, carbon dioxide and water. Um, you know, carbonic acid is the acid in carbonated beverages, right? And so if you are uh, pushing a lot of carbon dioxide into water, uh, you get carbonic acid dissolved in the water. But whenever you open uh, the bottle, and you release the pressure of CO2, um, the carbonic acid wants to um, dissociate back into CO2 and H2O. And that's why you have this equilibrium here. Um, so when, but then there is that CO2 there, right? And um, so if you look at the overall uh, equation, it, you see that CO2 plus H2O is in equilibrium with H3O plus and HCO3 negative one, right? And um, that's important to know because um, CO2 is constantly produced by metabolic processes in the body. You, you know that we, when we are, uh, you know, the metabolic processes have CO2 as a waste and CO2 uh, needs to be eliminated. And so it travels in the blood uh, and then from the blood uh, will um, uh, cross the uh, membrane of the lungs. And so we will go through the lungs and then be uh, expelled with your breath, right? That's how we um, get rid of the waste uh, of CO2 in our body. And so, there is a lot of CO2 circulating in the blood. And so that CO2 is in equilibrium because the blood is made of water too. So the CO2 uh, is in equilibrium with the H3O plus and HCO3 minus that are dissolved in the blood. And so that uh, tells you that the amount of CO2 that is in your blood is related to the pH of the blood. It, it's um, helping uh, create the buffer in your blood, but it can also be um, destabilizing the pH if um, if the CO2 uh, amount is not regulated. <laughs>
and let's look at examples of that uh, precisely. Um, there is a disease that is called um, respiratory acidosis that results when, for example, the body fails to eliminate enough CO2 uh, due to lung disease or failure, right? If your lungs are not able to um, extract the CO2 from the blood and, and get it out uh, of the blood, then um, uh, you will have too much um, CO2 in, in the blood. So a lower respiratory rate, for example, would increase the amount of CO2 in the blood. And because CO2 is in equilibrium with um, H3O plus and HCO3 minus that is in solution in the blood, uh, and that's an equilibrium. So remember, if you look at this and think about the Le Chatelier's principle, if you increase uh, the amount of CO2 in the blood, because it's not expelled properly by the lungs, um, if you uh, increase the amount of CO2, it's like increasing uh, the reactant in this uh, equilibrium. Increasing the reactant means the uh, equilibrium will be shifted to the right to consume that reactant, to uh, decrease the amount of CO2. And so the equilibrium is shifted to the right, and so you're producing more H3O plus and HCO3 minus. And that H3O plus uh, is um, determining the pH, right? So uh, increasing the amount of H3O plus ions in the blood will lower the pH. And a low pH means, um, explains why this is called respiratory acidosis. It be, your pH becomes too acidic. On the other hand, if uh, you have, um, if you're hyperventilating, for example, or uh, very little CO2 is produced in your body, uh, you risk having a respiratory alkalosis. So in this case, um, uh, you don't have enough CO2 in your blood. And um, bec because, for example, if you're hyperventilating, that means you, you're expelling CO2 very quickly. So you decrease the concentration of CO2 in your um, blood. And so here, again, using Le, Le Chatelier's principle, uh, you see that if you decrease the amount of the reactant, CO2 here, you will drive the reaction to the left because the equilibrium will try to replenish uh, the amount of CO2 in the blood. And so this will drive the reaction to the left. And so a faster respiratory rate will decrease the amount of CO2 in the blood. This will drive the reaction to the left, which means it will decrease the amount of H3O plus uh, in, in, in the blood because H3O plus is in the product and they are consumed. And a low amount of H3O plus means the pH will increase. And a higher pH uh, is the reason why this is called respiratory alkalosis because a high pH means it's basic. And as I said um, uh, um, at another uh, occasion, um, uh, alkali or alkaline is a synonymous of basic. So respiratory alkalosis means that it's, your blood is too basic, the pH is too high. And that leads to a disease and, and problems, health problems. And that's the end of this video.